it's Betsy and Mom from Happily Ever After, etc. And we are back with another garden video. So we were not planning to do all this today, but I will leave a link below. We just did a video. It's a little janky, but it shows you this stuff on taking out this giant magnolia tree. So if you've been watching the garden videos we've been doing at Mom's house where we laid out this path and put in a drip system and transplanted roses. Yeah. It's all gone. So <laughs> when mom decided to already know her. take out this magnolia, she essentially decided if she's going to do it, she better do it now because otherwise we're going to do all this work. And then in five, six years, it'll get, ruined. it'll get ruined. It's better to ruin it now in the very beginning stages. And so when you originally got the quote, they had said she just needed to move the cast iron stove and the dogwood tree but, and the bird bath. And the bird bath. But then when they actually came out to do it, they were like, oh no, you got to move everything. They literally moved the bricks. I mean, go watch the video. They, they moved everything. Yeah. Like there was nothing here, but their giant machine. Yep. So we are going to go ahead. We're going to start putting things back now. Mom has a couple plants and uh, we just filmed a whole part on where she was thinking things were going to go. We realized then we didn't film an intro. So we're going to cut from this into that video where mom is deciding where she wants things. And then we will cut back to planting them. So movie magic, y'all. Movie magic. Let's right. go. Hey. So I just died. <sighs> yeah, I'm okay. I just stepped back thinking I was on a paver and I was not. So now I think we're going to re-put the brick path here back where mom wants it. And then you want to go over there and talk about your trees, mom? Over here? Yeah. So mom has three trees. So the magnolia that was here was like 80 years old and it was huge. And while it was beautiful, I mean, I showed you a million times, it just was cut straight down by the power lines. And so we don't want to plant anything that's going to get that big again. We also definitely don't want to plant a magnolia because as, as pretty as it was, the, the leaf droppings were just no fun for anyone. So definitely, I mean, as, as sad as we are to see it go, we are not sad to see the leaf litter go. So tell them about your trees, mom. Well, I got a low plot. Face the camera, mom. I got a low plot tree. Which is a fruit tree. A fruit tree. And it gets 30 to 35 tall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'd be good. And so that's going to be our... Um, our tallest tree of the tree is. So we're going to put it here in this corner so that even once it grows all the way up, it will not interfere with the power lines. Yeah. Now the tree is, I'll put a picture of it up on the screen right now. It's, it's a nice size, but it's definitely not full grown. They are fast growing trees. Do you remember how quickly they said they grow? I think it's a couple feet a year. I'll put yeah. that up on the screen as well. But yeah. they said typically in about 10 to 15 years, it'll be full size. So it's not going to be full size tomorrow, but it will be fairly quick as yeah, far as size, trees go. And mom bought a pretty big one. She doesn't want to have to wait 20 years for it to reach its full potential. I think you might have to give up on this rake idea, mom. So then the second thing she has is a crepe myrtle. So you might have seen, I'll link below, I just planted my twilight crepe myrtle, which is a purple leaves with bright pink blossoms. Mom bought a regular crepe myrtle that has one trunk and it's more of a lollipop shape yeah, and, it has lilac. and has lilac colored blooms. And so she's going to put it over on that side. So the question is, where? Well, you can either put it there 
and then put the dogwood up here. Or you can put it back by the azalea and put the dogwood over where you are now. I think the dogwood needs to be up here. So I think that's a good spot for the crepe myrtle. Because again, we like the crepe myrtle mom bot gets 20 to 25. Yep. So it'll be that second tier of tree. But it shouldn't get tall and bushy enough to really interfere with the power lines. Yeah. And then up here, somewhere in here is where we'll put the dogwood. Over here somewhere. More of a front tree. Yeah, because it has those pretty, pretty, pretty pink blooms. Blossoms. And so I had a question on my last post when I planted my crepe myrtle about why I was planting a crepe myrtle so close to my bigger tree. Can you tell them about oh, under some canopy trees, trees, Mom? Some trees are understory trees. They really aren't meant to grow out in the middle of the, of the sun. Of the sun, yeah. So but especially like pushing. dogwoods especially really like to be under a larger canopy. Crepe myrtles. It's going to get taller, so it'll give it some, it'll nice give it some shade. shade. Um, the dogwood, what, is 10 to 15 feet? And, and actually, the house gives shade right in this area. And while uh, crepe myrtles area. do okay as normal trees, they do prefer to be in groups or under a bigger tree. They just, they bloom better than yeah. if they're out all by themselves. So it, it's one of those things where you can plant a crepe myrtle just in the middle of your yard. It just might not do as well as if you put it in a grouping with other trees. In my backyard, in the middle of but the they are, they've, been, they've there been there a long time. It took a long time for them to get established enough to perform well by themselves. But I think this is going to work. But definitely, I mean, crepe myrtles are much better about that than dogwoods. Yeah. So we've got one loquat, crepe myrtle. Loquat over there. Yep. Loquat, crepe myrtle, dogwood. And the loquat gets white blossoms that turn into fruit. The crepe myrtle gets lilac and the dogwood gets pink. Yeah. So it'll be a pretty mix. Most of this flower garden. Mom prefers to do a big mix of colors than one specific color scheme. So then the next question is, we have two roses and the vitex. Where do you want to put the vitex? Yes, so the vitex and the crepe myrtle are going to bloom different times. Up front? Yeah. Okay. And then where do you want to put the roses? Uh, there's like one here and one over there. All right. You ready to plant those three? So the crepe myrtle and the dogwood are still in their pots. I will show them to you. But they are... They're in water, so we'll, we'll place them just to see what we think. But the, the vitex and the roses had already been planted. Mom had to dig them up in order for them to get their big machinery in here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get them back in the ground. Yep, so they're not stressed. And then we will come and do a whole tree planting video for you later on. All right. It is hot, hot, hot out here. I I have Meniere's, which is a inner ear disorder. 
And uh, so every time my vision starts to go black, I go take a break. But mom cannot be dissuaded. She's out here digging her hole. I think it's deep enough yet. Try. Might have to cut that back big brood out a little bit more. Pretty big hole. The problem is that while mm. it's deep enough already, we're on a slope. And once we take all this monkey grass out, the actual ground is even with the, the ground that mom's standing on here. So that is what we need the top of our root ball to be even with. All right. Let's see what we got. We are all done for the day. Hot, hot, hot. Gross, gross, gross. But we even planted the trees. We were not planning to do that, but it is going to rain over the next week. So we just decided it would be better for them to get them in the ground where they can get that nice rain down to the roots and established. Got all the roses and the vitex reestablished. Got the path redone. And we're going to call that good for today. We still have plenty of annuals and perennial plants, but we are not going to worry about those today. So hope you liked this video. It looks so different without that big magnolia. See you in the next one. Bye.